Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good and hope uh, you're all uh, getting good understanding of Kubernetes and um, if you haven't had a chance to look at my previous videos I would recommend watching my previous videos in the Learn Kubernetes series uh, in the Learn Kubernetes playlist. Um, if you like uh, the videos please share it with your friends and subscribe for more videos. Uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is to show you how to run a simple Docker container in a Kubernetes cluster. We will go through like a couple of videos, uh, sorry, a couple of examples, a uh, couple of Docker containers and how to run them on your Kubernetes cluster. Um, as in all my videos, I'm going to start up, I'm going to bring up a new cluster using Vagrant and uh, I've shown you how to do that in one of my previous videos. If not, uh, go, I would recommend go and watch that video, Kubernetes setup using Vagrant, uh, I think that's the title. Okay, so I'm in the play directory and I'm going to clone my git repository. Git clone the Kubernetes repository. It says the path already exists. Okay, let's delete that first. Git clone Kubernetes. CD to Kubernetes and to Vagrant provisioning and to Vagrant up. Right, this is going to bring up the cluster with one master node and two worker nodes. I'm going to pause the video here and come back when all the machines are provisioned. Right, um, Vagrant has completed provisioning our Kubernetes cluster. The cluster should be up and running. And before accessing the cluster, I'm going to copy the uh, kubectl configuration to my host machine so that I don't have to log into uh, the uh, the virtual machines. So in order to do that I'm going to clear if I've got the configuration already from my previous videos. Make directory dot cube under my home directory and SCP the file etc kubernetes admin dot conf to config under dot cube directory. That's copied. Let's check the status of our cluster kubectl cluster info cool cluster is working fine kubectl git nodes and we've got all the three nodes which are in ready status so let me start my tmux session so that it'll be easy to watch okay so uh, the services the cluster services are all uh, running fine now let's um, deploy our first container. Let's start our first container. There are a few ways you can deploy applications to Kubernetes cluster. You can run the commands directly or you could um, create YAML files. Just for learning purpose you can um, try these direct commands but when it comes to production in the real world um, the best practice would be to create YAML files so that you can store it under version control. You can, um, you can audit the changes um, who did what change and so on. So it's, it's better to write YAML files, but um, for this um, video we'll do uh, the command way. Uh, I will also show you, if you've got time, I will also show you how to do the uh, create YAML files from the existing deployments and then you can use YAML to um, create those resources. Okay, so in the top pane above I'm going to run a watch command kubectl get all minus o wide uh, I'm in the default namespace. If you don't specify any namespace, you would be doing all your operations in the default namespace. And the Kubernetes service, that's the default service uh, sitting there. Otherwise, you haven't got anything in the default namespace. Let's try and start um, our first container. So before doing that, I'm going to show you, I'm going to log into the worker nodes, Vagrant SSH K Worker 1. Vagrant sshk worker 2 and if I do sudo docker images um, you can see these docker images have already been pulled uh, these are for the uh, the Kubernetes parts uh, that we did when we set it up initially so other, other than that we don't have any other docker images sudo docker images nothing so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start a busybox container which is going to download the busybox docker image and run it in our cluster. So the command would be kubectl 
run, you need to give it a name, for example, my shell minus it for interactive and image busy box, and I'm going to start the shell process. So it says the container is creating, uh, it's getting created in kworker1, and if I go to kworker1 and do sudo docker images, it's not there, it's still trying to retrieve the docker image. So now the service is running, now the pod is running, if I do that again, you can see it has downloaded the busy box. That's, that's all I wanted to show you. So the, bo the box gets downloaded, the Docker image gets downloaded onto the uh, worker node where the pod is, uh, pod is scheduled. Okay, so now, ping, uh, you've got a shell, ping google.co.uk and it's working fine. And if you exit out of that session, you can see the status has completed, but still uh, the pods deployment and the replica set are left behind. So you got to delete that manually. kubectl delete deploy my shell. It has deleted the deployment, the replica set, and it's terminating the pod. Okay, so um, if you want to um, if you want to delete these deployments automatically when you exit out of the shell, when you exit out of the uh, container, what you can do is you can run the same command with the minus minus rm option. Okay, I'm just waiting for the uh, pod to terminate. Okay, the pod is gone now, and if I do that again, so now it has gone to kworker2, and the container is getting created. If I go to kworker2, and do docker images. It's still getting... Okay, so now it's got, and now if I exit out of the session, as you can see, it has deleted the uh, the deployment um, replica set and it's terminating the part. That's all gone now. Okay, that's just one example, and <clears throat> now let's try and uh, uh, start an nginx container. The command would be kubectl run nginx, that's the name of the deployment, minus minus image nginx. If I do that, so it has created the deployment nginx, it has created the replica set, and it's downloading the docker image for nginx. And it's going to start that container once it has downloaded the image, and it is running in node k worker 1 let's wait for it to complete meanwhile we'll go to k worker 1 and check what's the status docker images and you can see nginx is running cool okay so how do you access the nginx application so you've started the container it's running on port 80 by default unless you specify minus minus port 8080 or something like that so now, there are two ways to access it. One is you can use port forward, where you can specify a port on your local machine and forward that to a port um, onto your container, or you can create a service. We'll see both. First, let's see how the port forward works. kubectl port forward and the pod name, nginx. You're going to forward the local port 80 to port 80 on the container. And if you do that, it's waiting and let's launch the browser localhost colon 8080 that's your nginx welcome page it's working now and while we are here I also wanted to show you if you followed my previous video where I showed you how to install the kubernetes dashboard you can select the pod you can view the pod the container logs you can also do that from the command line kubectl logs on the pod name nginx so that's the nginx log okay so that's done and the next thing I wanted to show you is how to increase the number of replicas so at the moment we've got just one instance of nginx running this is just for learning purpose but in the real world if you want to 
deploy a web application you would deploy multiple instances of web servers and then you've, you'll have the you'll have the load balancer run in and um, forward the request to multiple instances of nginx so let's see how you can do that um, if you haven't created this nginx deployment you could use the same command like this and then use minus minus replicas to or in our case as we have started the container already you can use kubectl scale option and give it a select the deployment either deployments or deploy for short nginx replicas 2 that's going to create another container and it's getting created on uh, kworker 2 right so once it's created so now there are two replicas running so how would you access it the first method is port forward uh, that will forward the local port to a specific part in your deployment not to all the parts the better way would be to create a, a service you can either create a yaml file and then load it or you can just run the command so both the parts are running fine now and you can look at kubectl describe pod nginx select one of the pod and you can see all the details like uh, uh, the events when it's created when it's started and so on so now let's create a service kubectl expose is the command kubectl expose select the deployment which is nginx and I'm going to use the node port option I'm going to set the endpoint to port 80 so if I do that a new nginx service is created with node port 32151 and if I look at the service kubectl describe service or svc for short nginx that's the service name you can see two endpoints here 10.244.1.3 which is kworker1 10.244.2.3 which is kworker2 okay the service is created and the node port is you can see it here 32151 let's see if we can access that one you can access the node port from any of the worker nodes kworker1 colon 32151 that's the nginx welcome page and same if you go to kworker2 colon 32151 cool so far looking good and all right so we've created a service we've accessed the service we've used the direct commands to create all these and there's an easy way so if you've got the deployment running already you could generate a yaml file from that deployment okay let's do that kubectl get deploy nginx and output that in the yaml format redirect it to a temporary file nginx.yaml and uh, I'm also going to uh, export the service kubectl get service nginx output that to yaml file and create that in the nginx service redirect that to nginx service.yaml okay let's look at these files now temp nginx.yaml okay api version kind metadata i don't need annotations deployment i'm going to delete all the lines that i don't want just to keep things simple so i'm going to keep deleting this line generations i don't need that one namespace is default even if you don't specify it's going to deploy that in the default namespace I don't need this I don't need these lines replicas I'm going to leave it as two replicas I don't need revision history I don't need the strategies template okay that's the part template container image pull policies always and there are other options you can specify if not present so on and if you specify always every time you 
run this deployment no matter whether the docker image has been already pulled into the worker nodes it's anyway it's going to pull the node the docker image every time so I don't want to do that delete it restart policy always if a pod fails it gets restarted scheduler name I don't need all these I don't need all the status so basically that's it that's the YAML file for deployment let's save that and let's look at the service definition nginx service.yaml and same here I'm going to delete the lines that I don't need kind is service so we're going to create a resource service resource okay I think that's it uh, we're going to create a node port with port 32151 if I save that and I need to delete the existing uh, deployment before I deploy it from the YAML file kubectl delete deploy nginx kubectl delete service nginx okay that's gone um, everything is clean now let's do it this way kubectl create minus f for file nginx.yaml so it has created the deployment remember we specified two replicas so it's going to create two containers two pods one on kworker1 the other on kworker2 deployment has been created with a desired count of two and the replica set with two replicas okay it's all running now let's deploy the service kubectl create minus f temp nginx service.yaml and it has created the service file and the port is 32151 let's see if we can access it kworker1 32151 well you see it kworker2 colon 32151 you see it cool that's it right <coughs> I'm going to clean this clean this up and uh, the easiest way is to if you have if you use the yaml file there is a kubectl delete minus f and you can delete nginx service.yaml and nginx.yaml so that has deleted all our resources cool I think uh, that's all I wanted to show you in this video um, we created a new cluster from scratch using my vagrant file um, we created a, a simple busy box container we used a nginx container um, I showed you how you can access the service using the port forward if you've got one replica or one instance of nginx if you've got multiple instance the best way is to use the uh, the node port service and you can access it from any worker nodes um, I think uh, that's it for this video. I haven't got anything else uh, in my video. As yeah, as mentioned previously, that the best way, the best practice is to write YAML files um, so that it gets documented. You store it under version control, source control, um, and so that it, you, can, you can use that for audit purpose. It's it's, it's the best thing. Okay, so. Um, Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel. And um, I will see you in my next video. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.